This is Robert with Pioneer Smokehouses, and we are doing a series of test cooks with the Oklahoma Joe Tahoma Smoker, and next up is chicken. Now, we just did a test cook with some pork burnt ends, and if you haven't seen that video, go check it out, but the next phase will be chicken, because now I'm really comfortable that it's real tasty. Now, I'm running it at 350. I do not like to cook poultry under 325 because I like to get a crisp skin. But let's go ahead and take a look at a little bit of the preparation video. I just grabbed one of my little old cameras and ran that in the kitchen. First thing I did was I cleaned up the chicken thighs and cut off any of the extreme excess on the fat. I don't mind a little bit on there, but I like to get rid of a lot of the extra chunks. It's just in the way and it makes a big mess in the smoker. Then I went ahead and I punctured it with uh, a meat tenderizer. So I take the blade out of the press tenderizer and then I just use that by hand. Do be careful if you do that because those things are really sharp. But even when you have it inside the holder, it can be kind of sharp. And that works best with a big piece of meat so you can really get into it. But with chicken, it's easier just to puncture the edges. And what I was trying to do was I'm trying to puncture the skin so that way no oil gets trapped underneath it during the cooking process. I want those holes so oil will escape and come to the surface. And then that way, it'll give it a better chance to crisp up. As we start, we'll start with the skin up. And then during the cooking process, I'll flip it over so that way it'll get a chance to get heat directly from the bottom. You can see the next thing that I did was I spread a good layer of the Cosmos Dirty Bird rub on there. Now, Cosmos is one of my favorite chicken rubs, and they also, cow cover is also one of my favorites too. I don't know about pork. I haven't really settled on anything for that. Then I flipped over the chicken, and I went ahead and added a coat to the bottom then flipped it back over and added a second coat to the top. When you flip it over back and forth, a lot of the coating will tend to come off on the cutting board, and I wanted to make sure it had a good chance to get a good amount on there. Now let's go ahead and open this up, and you can see already that we have a cookie sheet in here that we've been using to catch grease. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set down one of my larger grill mats here. Put that on there don't push it all the way to the back and there's a reason so then we're going to go ahead and we're going to just start loading up the chicken and we want to go every other one one will go this direction one will go that direction that way we can get five across i'm going to take this I'm going to put this right in this chicken thigh. It's kind of important to get it level and not to touch the bone. Now this chicken thigh is going to get the temp spike. Running it through the thickest part of the meat. And I want to make sure that I get that black line in there without touching the bone. Kind of hang it out like that. It's hard on the smaller cuts of meat. The same with the burnt in pork pieces is you just kind of got to do the best you can. Then once I do that, I'm going to move this back just a little bit more. I want to make sure that that is not touching the metal because it'll transfer heat into it. And then we'll go ahead and close it. Now what we're going for is an internal temperature of right around 160 degrees. We can come up to 155 and then give it a good rest and it'll probably continue to go up past 160, which is great. Chicken thighs are very, very forgiving. So if you go over all the way up into the 170 range, you'll probably be fine. Let's go ahead and let these cook. We're running today at 350 because we are doing a consumption test and We'll just let this go and see how it goes. We are back and the temp spike gave me a reading of 125 on the internal temperature. 
and we're showing 134 right here. So I thought I better get them turned over as soon as possible. Now you can tell that the spike is not directly in the center. So those readings could be a little suspect, but I'll check them with an instant read thermometer also. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna flip all of them over. So I'm just gonna pull this out just a little bit and then start working them over. If you think it's too hot for you, then use a pair of tongs or something. I'm used to grabbing stuff that's pretty warm, so it's no big deal for me. Okay, that's back one. The wired one is always the hardest one to flip. And there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and slide it back in. So I'm gonna just try to line it up in the middle over the pan, and I don't need to push it back quite as far as it was, but that looks pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead and get this running, and I'm saying that it's gonna be another 20 minutes, and these things are gonna be done, and then I'll let them rest for a few, and they'll be ready to eat. So I'll be back in one second for you, 20 minutes for me. All right, we're back with you here, and showing 162 on the temp spike, and the internal temperature from the Oklahoma Joe is showing 168. I think that's really because we're pretty close to the edge and these are small pieces of meat. I brought out my Thermopro Lightning. Now I have the basic model, which is something like a TP12 or whatever, and I was perfectly happy with that. But you know, you gotta buy these new toys all the time. The Lightning is super fast, so I can go back here and hit this thick one right here, trying to get in there without hitting the bone. And it's showing 180. This one's 155. 175, I'm thinking that I'm just getting really close to the bone on these. Same piece, 162. I'm gonna come over here, so maybe you can see that on the close-up cam. 162 there, 180 there. It's just really hard to get a temperature on such a small piece of meat. 162 right there. I'm gonna say this is all done, perfect. Set this aside. I went ahead and I brought out a platter and then I'm just gonna set that right there so it might get a little warm. I brought out some tongs because they are hot. I mean, let's be honest. And I'm gonna go ahead and unload these. Now the skin is not crispy. If you want it crispy, there's a lot of different options. And my favorite is set it on a cookie sheet and put it under the broiler in my oven, but Air fryer is also a good option. This one looks pretty good. A lot of seasoning on there. I'm just gonna go ahead, take a cut right here. You can see by looking at that cut that it is completely done. Let's get it right up in here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this piece in half and then t sample it. Mm. That's really good. Skin tastes great, but I think it would be a lot better if it were crispy. So why don't you give me a minute That'll just be one second for you and probably about five minutes for me. And I'm gonna go throw this under the broiler and I'll be right back. So I went about five minutes under the broiler and it probably could have used another two or three minutes because there's just a lot of fat in the chicken skin. So it takes a little while before it really crisps up. But you can see the edges got nice and crispy there and it's not like mushy and soft. So that is an improvement over a smoked chicken any day. But the flavor was amazing. So let's go ahead 
and cut into another one of these pieces. I used a small cookie sheet, so there was only enough room for eight of those pieces. The other two I can uh, save and cook later. I have a sill pat down under here, so I want to be careful with it. And it's very, very juicy. Show you that. All right, and then last thing. Let's show you the whole tray. Looks pretty good to me. And this is going to be my dinner. Well, a couple of pieces will be my dinner. The Oklahoma Joe home is uh, not currently available on Amazon, so I'll include a link for where I bought this one. And when Amazon has it, I'll update that link. Also below that, you'll find my Amazon links. Those will help support the channel, so if you use those, I will get compensated, but it won't cost you anything. So thanks again for watching and have a great day.